Hey, y'all. Welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License, uh, my Sunday stream where we do a little bit of whatever I want today. Uh, Lady said she's going to run the stream. She wants to run the stream today. Um, she's made that very clear, you guys. So, uh, so yeah, she's going to do that. <laughs> Welcome in, by the way, Koneko. I see you got the first. I know we thought that you weren't maybe going to be able to come today, so I'm so glad to see that you are. We are going to be playing Mist 3 Exile today, and I'm so excited to show it to you guys. Um, we played the first two. We played Mist, and we played Riven. <laughs> Oh, that was loud noise. Um, and so now we're gonna play. We're gonna play the third one. So uh, no personality quiz or any of that today, because I want to make sure that we have enough time on stream today to get to the point that I want to get to in the game, um, and still hopefully play some some Sims too. Okay. Um, I got my Lacroix here, my lime Lacroix. Got to open that up. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I want to get right into it. So, but before we do, I just want to explain a little bit about this game because it's a little bit different than Mist and Riven that we played before. <clears throat> um, some things are not different. I still have my notebook and my pencil. Okay, we still have that very important part of playing a Mist game. Um, but there's two main things that I want to tell you guys before we get into it. So the music for Mist and for Riven was composed by um, Robin Miller. Remember, that's one of the two brothers that made Mist. Um, he played Cirrus, but uh, Robin is not involved at all in Mist 3. So instead, Jack Wall created the score for this third game here. And no disrespect to Robin. Okay, full respect to Robin, aka, as we know, the hot one of the brothers, Mr. Robin Cirrus Miller. He's great. However, Exile has the best music. So pay attention to that because it's amazing. It's fabulous. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Um, Jack uh, Wall took what Robin had done with the music of Mist and of Riven and just like just like elevated it, like just took it to the next level. It's beautiful. So pay attention. Um, this game also really is made by Presto Studios, not Cyan. Um, and unfortunately, it didn't sell as well as the first two games. Uh, it received a lot of 7s and 8s out of 10s instead of like the 9 and 10 out of 10s uh, of the series previously of Myst. So here's the reason why. Basically, everyone felt like it was out of date for the time period that uh, that it was released in. In addition to that, uh, two groups of fans were just not happy. Um, so the people that were here for the puzzles really didn't like that this game kind of took a step back. So the puzzles here are easier than missed even. And the people that were here for the puzzles, like they loved that like high difficulty level of Riven. That does not exist in this game. This game is not like that. Um, also, the people that were here for the world building really did not enjoy kind of the world building side of the story for how the main world, Jananin, that you're going to see very quickly in the game, how that came to be. Um, we'll get more into that in the game. No story spoilers. But suffice it to say, fans did not like Mist 3. But here's what I'm here. I'm here to tell you today. Mist 3 is good, actually. All right. It's good, actually. Um, by the end of this playthrough, you will be convinced that what Presto Studio was going for here adds value to the Mist canon. It's good. I promise you, I'm here to prove it to you. I'm here to prove it. Okay. Let's get into the game. All right. Here we go. Can you, it's, there we go. You can see. All right. Let me make sure you can hear. Um, there we go. Now you can hear it. All right, that's a little bit loud though. Let's turn her down. Okay, all right, we got it working. All right, let's get started. You hear it, yay, 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 yay. Okay, fantastic. Oh my gosh, and welcome in by the way, Koneko. I saw you got the first and I'm so glad that you're here. Okay, here we go. We're gonna start it with a cutscene, so we're gonna be quiet for a minute. We're just gonna watch. I realized as our group linked back to Dunny that we should not restore the city as we had planned. The once magnificent buildings lay in ruin, a testament to the hatred that had consumed them. Too many people had fallen victim to that hate, to the prejudice and greed from which it sprang.
Gazing out across the cavern, I decided to write another age. One that would help the Dunny survivors begin again, free from the tragedies of their past. So with my wife, Catherine, supporting me, I put aside that past to write a future. More than a year has gone by since I finished writing Relishan. I have a new daughter, who I hope will someday link to the age with me. And as I imagine Yisha meeting the Dunny, those brave men and women who are building a new life for themselves, I realize I've been given another chance as well. A chance to learn from my mistakes and leave the past behind me once and for all. Yes, I will check for subtitles, Koneko. Let's do that before we go farther. Uh, let's see. Context language. Yes, subtitles on. Okay. Okay, so we have this beautiful... isn't it? Oh. Oh my gosh, it's Catherine. We call it Tamana. We moved here after Atrus finished writing Relishan. He wanted us to have a new home too. I'm so glad to see you. I told Atrus our paths would cross again. He was just going to grab something for your trip to Relishan, so he shouldn't be terribly long. Unless he decides to check over the whole house first, which means he could be hours resetting all his padlocks. But I know he was looking forward to introducing you to the Dunny, so he shouldn't be terribly long. Why don't you wait in his study? All right, so there's Catherine. Um, Atris and Catherine have a new baby. I'm so glad we saved her from Riven and from Gen. That's awesome. Uh, so this is their their daughter. This is their daughter. They're trying again. They didn't do too good with their sons. They're going to try again with their daughter. So here we go. This is Atris's study right here. And you can look around at a lot of fun stuff. So if we come over here, you can see there is this book that you cannot access. I believe this is supposed to be the Mist um, linking book. There's all kinds of fun stuff on Atris's shelf here. Uh, and then he's got a bunch of stuff on his desk. So here we go, here's the two sons. This should look a little bit familiar from the opening cinematic. This is where he was writing in that. So you can see he's got like a little magnifying glass here. Uh, he's got this guy. He's got a beautiful little picture of Catherine and his daughter. And he's got this letter right here. So, oh! We saw him writing this, right? So let's read it. Toman, thank you for responding so quickly to my request for Nara padlocks. As you know, security in Tomana has become an important issue of late. Perhaps I'm overreacting, as Catherine suggests, but the idea that someone may have been sneaking into my study, reading all my journals, disturbs me. After what happened to my library on Mist, after my sons, Sirius and Akinar, destroyed so many of my books, I've come to realize how delicate the links to my worlds. I've never been able to repair those burn books to link, that link to each age and find out if the inhabitants survived. The padlocks won't change that situation, but they should ease my fear of trespassers considerably. Sincerely, Atris. Okay, so he's scared that tragedy is going to strike again, like what his sons did to all of his books on Mist. So, uh, so he's he's become very cautious. He's become very cautious. All right. So over here, oh, this is that Relishan book that he, we saw a moment ago. Well, my very friend, interesting. I hey, the Relishan book. Catherine tells me. You've oh been my gosh, it's Atris. I'm sorry if I've kept you waiting. Since we'll be gone a few days, I needed to secure some of my things. And I also wanted to bring you this. It's a journal I kept while I was writing Relishan. I thought you might find it interesting to read about what I'd hoped to achieve compared to what the age truly is. Well, just let me get my keys to unlock Relishan and we'll be off. Oh, and I'm interested in hearing what you've been up to in recent months. Oh my gosh, it's Wormtail. And a fire marble. <laughs> And there goes the book. <laughs> no matter what 
Beatrice does. He's always losing his books, always dropping his books, and we have to go save him. So time to do that yet again. Let's go. Thank you, friendo. Oh, there he goes. Okay, we have to go chase Wormtail. The heck. Yes, that is the same actor as Wormtail. Um, he's excellent in this game. Best part of this game. I love him so much. Okay, he's going in there. The heck. Wormtail, come back. I need that book. Oh, no. It's locked. Um... <laughs> Thank you so much for the follow, friendo. I hope you love Mist as much as we love Mist. Uh, yes, ah, thank you. Uh, we played through Mist and Riven. There's videos of that on my YouTube channel. So we're playing through Mist 3 now. All right, so he's locked the door. We can't get in to say hello to Wormtail. What the heck? Um, I want to point out a couple cool things. One cool thing about this game. So you'll notice first what's different. At the, even though I'm like clicking, you can see I'm clicking to move forward just like you do in the original Mist and Riven. The pictures, they're, they're, it's, it's 3D. Oh my gosh, it's 360. Everything, I can just look around anywhere, okay? So I did do a little test run of this game to um, see if it triggered my simulation sickness. It doesn't do it too bad, so I think we should be okay so long as we break this into two streams. All right, now before we go chasing Mr. Wormtail, let's read the journal that Atris gave us. Remember, Atris passed us this journal. So let's uh, let's take a read and see see what's going on here. He must have given this to us for a reason. Let's see what he's got to say. All right. I always feared this day would come. For years, Catherine and I have dreamed of restoring Denis. We have dedicated our lives to the task, taking it upon ourselves to locate the citizens of Dunny and convince them to return to their ruined city and rebuild. Our dream has become the dream of so many now, and the progress we've made towards achieving it is something of which we all can stand proud. But I know now that it has been a mistake. The city of Denis should not be restored. It should stand forever in ruins as both a symbol of our past mistakes and a memorial to all who lost their lives when Denis fell. The devastating events of recent months, the war on Tirane, the death of Uta in particular, have driven this truth home to me quite forcefully. If we rebuild the city walls today, we're not giving approval to the very illness that destroyed our civilization in the first place. Are we not setting ourselves up to repeat the pattern again in future generations? I've put much thought into this tonight and have found only one solution. If we, the men and women who survive the downfall of Dunny, are to thrive, then we must break the pattern of hatred which has destroyed so many lives. We must begin our civilization anew, and we can only do that if I write us a new age. I've spoken with Catherine about this, and she agrees. I only hope the others will see it as well. Will these people never cease to amaze me? I thought they would object to my decision. After all, most of them have linked back to Denis specifically to see the city rebuilt. But when I told them why we should not restore it, their response was immediate and unanimous. Whereas yesterday they thought only of rebuilding, today they concentrate solely on salvage. They intend to take from their ruined city only that which is best and move on. Everywhere I look, the enthusiasm for this new task is obvious. It heartens me even as I face my own monumental contribution. I've written many ages in my lifetime, from my first timid attempts under the tyrannical tutelage of my father to my most recent accomplishment, Averone. Never before has so, many, so much been writing on my skill. The age I'm about to write must be all I ever imagined and more. How am I going to achieve it? Okay, so Atris has realized that the Dunny are evil colonizers, actually, and if we go back to Dunny, then we are just saying that that system is okay, actually, and we need we need a whole new system. So to not repeat um, our terrible colonizing ways. That's what Atris is saying. Let's read on. Catherine laughed this morning when she saw me drudging out my old notebooks. I must have made quite the picture, sitting near the embers of a fire surrounded by countless commentaries and journals. Some of them seem more dust than paper, but the hours I spent stifling through them was worth it. Ideas for what this new age might be are tumbling around in my head. 
there are almost too many to catch hold of. Obviously, I must choose some starting point as my anchor. Writing ages is, as a science, a precisely structured equation of words. Every equation needs as its foundation an underlying concept around which the age can develop. In the past, I've written my books around whatever idea intrigued me the most at the time. I wanted to discover how the age to which the book linked would manifest the results of that idea. Sometimes civilizations had arisen, sometimes they'd not. But whether a society had come to exist on the age or not, it was often in response to whatever concept the book I had written embodied. This time, my search for a concept must be weighed very carefully. I already have the civilization I wish to see develop. I know our history as a people and the paths we've followed to arrive here. Today, I must write a book which will link to an age that will allow us to continue on our way, growing ever stronger as one people. What underlying concept must this new age reflect that will best allow our civilization to thrive. I fear I must think on this some more. All right, he's having a little anxiety there about what he's got to do. It has taken me some time, but I may have found my anchor. It came to me as I was considering what I know about the survivors of Dani. We have seen so much tragedy in our lives, from the destruction of the city to the suffering and loss of loved ones due to plague and deprivation. Yet even in the midst of these adversities, my kinsmen and I have found the strength to keep going. We've tapped into our individual strengths and transformed ourselves into something much stronger. It's a characteristic I've seen in several of my ages. Whenever I focus my writing on the inherent energy sources of the world— Long ago, grandmother taught me that no life, no possibility for life in an age exists without the presence of energy. By tapping into its latent energy sources, an age must move out of stasis, or an age moves out of stasis. It grows, transforms, and develops. Energy is the underlying fuel that powers all activity. To put it simply, energy powers future motion. Yet, as grandmother also liked to remind me, energy in an age takes on diverse forms. Each one has strengths and weaknesses of its own. How many forms will this new age contain? Which type will be its dominant theme? Tomorrow, I will link back to mist, and from there, revisit several of my ages. Perhaps in my old worlds, I will discover new ideas. All right, that's got to be kind of um, it's gonna be nerve-wracking for him to go back to mist after what happened there. I've almost forgotten how painful it is to revisit Mist. In the ten years since my son, Cirrus and Akinar, left me trapped on Kavir Island and burned so many of my books, Catherine and I have rarely linked back. I told myself we were always too busy, first with writing ages like Avron, then with searching the... Searching the ages of, for Denise survivors, I always said I would spend more time on Mist eventually. The truth is, I've been avoiding the age. Seeing the island in its current condition ignites such anger and grief I'm immediately reminded of the betrayal of my sons, as well as the cruelty and greed with which they plundered my ages. I know I am partially responsible for these acts. I constantly wonder if there was something I could have done to reach out to the boys before, enough, nothing can change the tragedies of the past. Like my Denis kinsman, I must salvage what is best and move on. Perhaps in the process I'll find forgiveness and hope. Once again, I'm back on Mist Island having completed a lengthy sojourn through several of my ages. The trip itself was not as inspiring as I'd hoped. The Selenic Age was especially disturbing, but has it not always been so? The first time I linked to the ages, its uninhabited landscape was shaking with tremors. At the time, I felt it was because the energy in the ages was unfocused, as if it were at war with itself. Stability finally came, but even after it did, I never truly felt comfortable there. I missed the more natural balance of ages like channel wood. Perhaps that is the lesson to take home with me. The Dene, too, have faced much turmoil in their history. Their lives have been unsettled enough. Perhaps I should be striving to offset the energy that already exists within our civilization by providing it with a more stabilized environment in which to grow. An environment in which the natural equilibrium of the world serves as a counterpoint to upheavals of civilization. But the more I consider it, the more I wonder if I should make nature the foundation of this new age. Worlds like Channel would attain equilibrium quite easily, primarily because of one reason. Nature encourages mutual dependence. As one life withers and dies, it provides nourishment so that another might live. Plants become food for other animals, and the waste pr products animals cannot absorb become nutrients to sustain other plants. So long as nothing intrudes to upset this balance, nature can maintain itself indefinitely. 
an interesting metaphor to set as an example for my people. I think we'll confer with Catherine on this subject. Her ages always exhibit symbiosis more dramatically than mine. Perhaps she should help me write this new age. I am so tired. I can barely think right now, but I'll force myself to stay focused for I've not written anything in days. The moment I linked back to Denis, I was besieged with requests for my assistance. Master Tommen wanted to consult over which stone clusters were worth salvaging. And did I think the rock in this new age would be so difficult to sound? Oma and Essel need my opinion about a new history they've uncovered. They should hold off on starting its translation, or would paper supplies be scarce in new ages? There are so many questions that need answers, I've barely had time to see Catherine. She, of course, laughed at my dilemma, saying that I had no one to blame but myself. After all, I was the one who encouraged the Denis to start over. Naturally, they looked to me to keep them moving in the right direction, unless some other force stepped in to change that view. Her words made me realize a fundamental principle that I had thus far been ignoring. All this time, I've been debating whether to make energy or nature the underlying framework for this age, but there's another equation to consider. An age based solely on the future motion of energy will face constant upheavals, most likely at the cost of tranquility. And an age based solely on the mutual dependence of nature can become so balanced over time it may cease to tolerate change. Yet to continue to grow as a people, Denis civilization needs both, occasional upheaval followed by periods of balance and stability. I have been, seen several such ages. Da, da, da. I am almost without like a pause. I got through this part. Anyway, I have seen such situations occur naturally on several of my ages. Each time it was because I centered the writing around some dynamic force that I had decided to make prevalent in that age. Such forces allow the balance between forward motion and mutual dependence to fluctuate. As one concept takes precedence, the other recedes until another force sur surfaces to change things. As Catherine's insightful comment reminded me, dynamic forces spur change. I'm too tired to think more on this tonight. Hopefully the morning, my thoughts will coalesce. Catherine surprised me today. Apparently while I was off visiting my ages, she linked to mist by herself. She did not say so, but I could tell that her visit had been painful. More than ever now, I am convinced we must find a place to begin again ourselves. Perhaps when I have written this new age for the Denis, I will put some thought into where Catherine and I might live. I cannot believe I didn't see it before. All this time I've been struggling to describe the perfect age for the Denis. I have considered and then rejected several underlying concepts which I felt might best be the course for their future, as if I, sh I alone should determine how the Denis civilization will grow. In my own way, I've become as egotistical as my father. In truth, I owe this reflection to Catherine. Sensing my indecision about the new age, she led me on a walk around Denis. Salvaging efforts were well underway, with teams of people scouring the ruined harbor district. As I watched my Denis kinsmen deciding which parts of their culture to retain, I realized they don't need me to determine their future. They're quite capable of setting its course by themselves, regardless of what age I write. This realization has opened my eyes to the best way of approaching my task. I no longer need to worry about which underlying concept, energy, nature, or dynamic forces I should make prevalent in the age. Rather, I must strive to include them all. I must write a balance of systems into the descriptive book, enough so that the Denis people will constantly be challenged to attain their ultimate potential. As Grandmother often pointed out to me when we spoke about ages on mist, balanced systems stimulate civilizations. At last, I feel I'm ready to begin writing this age. Indeed, I'm eager to begin, and have already come up with the perfect name. I know Grandmother would have loved it. Of course, Catherine could tell the moment I turned to her that I had finally found my starting point. I babbled on excitedly for some time, before I noticed the smile she was hiding. When I saw it enough to grow suspicious, she handed me one of my oldest age books. She must have picked it up when she linked back to Mist, seeing the name Jananin. Emblazoned on the book cover, I could only shake my head. The one age I never got around to visiting because this w might have helped us the most. How foolish was I to completely have forgotten it. I think after I finish this work, I should take one final trip, if only to help restore, restore an old fool's memories. All right, and Jananin is where we are right now. So that's what Atris wanted us to read. So this is it. This is Jananin. Um, we're going to learn more about 
what Jananan is, why it exists, a little bit later. But right now, we need to figure out how to go talk to Mr. Wormtail in there. So, um, this is a pretty large tower. If you come down here, you can kind of like look back and see like a little bit of it. Let's come around this way. So from here, you can see like it goes down pretty far. And oh, there's like another entrance. All right, so we're gonna come around this way and we're gonna go find that entrance. Now, one kind of a negative to this 360 degrees is sometimes it's a little bit hard to tell where to click. Like for example, I know that there's this staircase here, but it's very easy to miss. And there's a couple of spots in the game that are kind of like that. They're just easy to miss. All right, so we're gonna come this way. And here we go, we're at the bottom of that tower that he went into. All right, so we're gonna come in here. Remember, flip this switch. Every time you see a switch, you flip it. Every time you see a button, you press it. That's the rules of mist. So we see a button, we press it. All right, we can get in here. Now there is another door around this way. We're not worried about that at the moment. We're coming in here. And right here, oh, there's a hammock. There's some fun things around here. So this is Mr. Wormtail's room. This is where he sleeps while he's been here on Jananan. We're gonna read that in a moment. That's um, that's his journal. We're first gonna come up here and do a little observation. So here's a painting of a woman with no eyes. Kinda creepy. All right, what the heck is that about? We're gonna find out. Let's come up here. So Wormtail has kind of a desk with a lab too. And there's some fun things we can do here. So right here, we've got four glass marbles and one iron looking marble. Got a mortar, mortar and pestle, some paint. All right, we've got a hammer right here, this guy. We've also got this, this is very interesting. So if we push this, we can see that it turns a crank and creates a little bit of electricity that makes some pebbles rise up. Very interesting. And then if we click on this, we can disconnect it and instead connect the electricity to this like shell plant looking thing. So let's see what the electricity does to the plant. All right, so we've got a Venus flytrap situation going on there. The fly goes back in. All right, if we come around over here, there's a couple more things. So we've got some more weights. So we've got four of these um, uh, wooden balls for one glass ball, okay. So we're gonna write that down, that's gonna be useful later. So, four wood equals one glass. And then four glass equals one iron. All right, so there we go. The flytrap's not biologically accurate. <laughs> it's a model, it's a model. This is his testing ground. This is our friend, our new friend, Wormtail's testing ground. All right, so the thing we can interact with in here is this guy. So we're gonna come around over here and we're gonna take a look at this. Now, if we open this up and step inside, we will see there's a lever here and that's really the only thing in here. So we're gonna pull this lever. Ride the elevator up. A beaker plant, which acts as a pitfall with acid at the bottom. Oh. <gasps> it's Wormtail. Atris? Is that you? No. Come to rescue your book so soon? Not yet, old friend. Not yet.
Okay. So this man knows Atris. All right. He knows Atris from somewhere. Very interesting. And he thinks that Atris is going to be the one to chase him to get the book back. Makes a lot of sense, right? That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Unfortunately, if we try to get out of the elevator to go talk to him, we're met with this door and it's locked and we actually can't reach the mechanism to unlock it from this situation. So all we can do is go back down. So let's go back down. All right, so we're gonna step out of the elevator. Well, whenever it's it lets us back out. Okay, there we go. Now we can step out of the elevator. And let's actually read Mr. Wormtail's journal. Let's see what he has to say. So this is what he has been noting while he's been here on Jananen. I have done it. I have used his swirling linking book to follow him. I touched my palm to its glowing panel and felt the tingling begin. There was a sudden, sickening lurch inside my stomach. Then I fell into the page. This has happened before. I know it. It happened the first time I came to this place, when I followed his murdering sons from Narayan. It happened when I used his hidden books, and it happened when I finally opened the machine. Right before the fog first ate my mind. The fog didn't find me this time. When I opened my eyes, I was alone in a room. I was standing in the home of my betrayers. I couldn't move. I was afraid. I thought they'd know that I had come and would be waiting for me. Just like they had waited inside this very tusk. I was afraid they would tie me up again, that the poison snakes would strike. But the silence was unbroken. The whole house was still, and without really knowing what I did, I started to search every room, every floor, every cabinet. I found his journals, Atris's never-ending journals. I found the book that brought me back to this world, the lesson world he calls Jananin. Oh, Tamara, my love, how long have I been trapped here? How much of my life has been eaten by the fog? The face I see in the lagoon isn't one I remember ever wearing. It's so much older, so much more savage. But it is me. It is Saavedro. And I remember what they did, how they led my people to death. Okay, yes, Koneko, exactly. So his name is Saavedro, and he has amnesia. Okay, and he's from Narayan, which is an age that Atris wrote. All right, so he's originally from Narayan. He's one of the natives. So here's the thing about Mist 3. In Mist 1, the villain was uh, Cirrus and Akinar, two young colonizers interested in power of colonization. Okay, in Riven... The main villain is a Denis supremacist, Gen. All right. In Mist 3, the main antagonist is a native. So I want us to keep that in mind as we play through Mist 3. This is quite a different take on what is going on in this universe. I have returned several times now to Tomana. I am searching for some sign of his sons. I was certain they would run back to their father. But so much time has passed. So many years in which to forget about my people. Is that what happened, Atris? Safe in your beautiful new home? Enjoying life with your dear wife and family? Did you become so busy envisioning new worlds that you forgot the ones you'd already created? I must be very careful. I must not let them know that I am free. I will read what journals I can find to figure out where his two sons are hiding. And when I found the sons again... <gasps> Lunar, hello, hello. Welcome in. We're, re we're reading Saavedra's journal. This is the antagonist of the game. When I've got their whole family together, I'll bring them down. 
Atris and his family will suffer the way I have suffered for years. Cirrus and Akinar are not in Tomana. Every day I become more and more convinced Atris' sons are not there. What happened to Atris? Did you grow tired of them the way you tired of Narayan? Did you abandon them the way you abandoned my people behind your shield? It does not matter. I can still take revenge against their father now that I'm no longer stuck on Jananan. I can avenge all the dead in my world. I've already reopened his other books. I have begun making changes in those worlds, using his own lessons against him. There's still much more work to be done, but eventually I will lure him into this tusk. I will find some way to make him follow me here from Tomana. For now, I will concentrate on the Orbiter. It's not a natural part of this world. The material that creates it is like nothing I've seen. It reminds me just a little of the shield, and if it is the same material, it can't be damaged. But perhaps I can damage the other devices. No, it can't be true. Surely his journals deceive me. He says he's brought them back. He says he's given the Denis brethren new life. But how? How can one man have so much power? How can one man's writings we awaken a dead world? I don't know what this means. By all that is sacred, Tamara, what can it mean? It doesn't change a thing. I can still continue as I planned. I can still seek revenge for my people. I will make my enemies suffer by the weaving tomorrow. Tamara, this changes everything. Welcome, Eminem. Welcome. Hello from Sweden. Okay. So um, we've got these graphs right here. I just want to point out these guys. So some of this is very useful for later on. So we're going to remember that this exists. And then this right here is useful for now. Have you cut your hair? Yes, I did cut my hair um, about, I guess, a month ago. ago. So yeah, kind of recently I did. I chopped it all off. It's not long anymore. It was too hot. It was too hot. Okay. So um, we've got we've got some puzzles. We've got some puzzles right here. So we've got these positions of these little hanging guys. We've got um, this little gear, and it needs to swing this way into these little teeth. And then there's this, is the big circle. Okay, and then we've got these two gears where one of them goes into the gap. In the other one, that, and then there's the rest of the gear. Yeah, and this is just a regular gear. Like that, and there's, there's the rest of the gear. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. I have found a way to reprogram his scanning device. It requires scavenging parts from another mechanism in the tusk, but I think, but I think the gears I leave can still be operated by hand. This is Mist 3 Exile, sequel to Mist and Riven. This is the third game. It is finished. All is ready for Atrus' arrival. Tonight, I will sleep among the ghosts. Then tomorrow, I will link to Tumana. When I link out, I'll be carrying his book. May the spirits of my people serve to guide me in this. Yeah, and this is the journal of, um, this is the journal of the antagonist of the game. Then we've got this little kind of triple thingy. So these are smooth sides together. And then you've got the screw part right here. And this one, you've got smooth sides together. With the screw part right here. And they go around the circle. Okay, so there's our little, there's our little notes. There's our little notes. This is a good game. It's a puzzle game. It's the third installment. Um, I love it. It's really good. Okay, and then what we've got is a couple of blank pages. Very interesting. Some blank pages in his journal. All right, so here's what we can do. If you kind of look down here, there's some really curious looking things down at the bottom of this elevator. So what happens if we send up the elevator without us in it? Right, elevator goes up. We're not there. Savedro at the top is very confused. Why is there an empty elevator coming up? I don't understand. Well, Savedro, that's because I have figured out what it is we need to do. I can tell you've tampered with stuff, and here, here's the stuff that you've tampered with. 
So puzzle games, I hate them. I love them. You can you can hang out with me and we'll we'll play this one and then you don't have to play it. And then it's easy. Okay, so we put these in this order. This one, we need to um make the this one's fine. Okay, so we need just one of the screw ends to be pointed towards it. So we'll flip that one. And we'll flip this one too. Okay, so that should be good. This one is very simple. You just turn the handle. So we turn the handle. That's what his drawing said to do. And then this one, very simple also. We just do it like this. Okay, now if I did everything right, then we should have fixed the elevator. So let's bring it back down and let's go up it again and let's see if I did it. And Eminent, if you enjoy this game, I have the first and second one, Mist and Riven, recordings on my YouTube channel that you can watch. So then you can enjoy them without having to play the puzzles. All right, let's get back in the elevator. Hopefully I did this right. Let's find out. Yes, I did. Now the elevator rotates. He's a true researcher, records what he changed in case he needs it again. Yes. Yes, he learned from Atris to do that. He learned from his oppressor. It's like, gotta think like Atris to escape Atris's traps. Okay, now, oh my gosh, we can get out. And there he goes. Bye, Saavedro. Um, well, we missed him. Okay, so uh, let's see what we can do about trying to follow him. Okay, so we can get out of the elevator um, and you can see like there's these three things. They were open before, they're closed now. But Saavedra was messing with this thing. Like he put papers on here to like make stuff happen. Um, but what you really want is to push this button. So this is a button that's gonna turn everything back on. So he turned the power off before he left because he's extra annoying. So we're gonna turn the power back on and we're gonna see what's up. My sons, I promised to teach you the secrets of my ages. This world is the first step on your journey. Search the island and you'll find three linking books. Each connects to an age in which you will be born. Hello, Atris. Been a long time. Sorry I'm not there to greet you in person, but I just didn't think it would be wise, considering how long I've been stuck here. Trapped in these lesson ages by two very greedy little boys. Your sons, Atreus, Cirrus, and Akinar. Of course, they're not so little anymore, not so innocent. I thought a lot about innocence these last few years and what happens when it gets lost. Worried about relation? I have it. Worried about friends, relatives, people you can't get back? I know just how you feel. But if you want to do something about it, you're going to have to open this device. And there's just one problem. I've changed the three symbols that do that. So if you want to reclaim relation, you're going to have to take your own class. <laughs> Find the three symbols, Atris. And don't keep me waiting forever. All right. So from reading the journals and watching that, we now can understand that Jananin originally existed to teach Cirrus and Akinar proper ways to write books so that you weren't being so evil about it, um, at least as little evil as possible. Um, and what has happened is that Cirrus and Akinar trapped this guy, Saavedro, in Jananin, um, tortured him, and he's been stuck here all this time. So now he's come through, sabotaged 
uh, all the different puzzles. He has changed all the symbols so that Atris actually has to redo the puzzles, but they're sabotage versions. So Atris wouldn't necessarily know how to solve them. But we're not even Atris, so like, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's what we got to do. And the first thing is to look through these. So you can see there's this sort of leaf watermark here and um, you can move this all around. Okay, you can move this all around. So we want to find the tusk. So let's zoom out and you can see in the window above the tusk, there is the same symbol. So we're going to line this up like this. Let's zoom in some more. We go. And then this one focuses. So it's something like that, kind of, sort of, um, for this. Now, it's hard to get these, like, really precise. So these are kind of approximations, right? Um, there's still, like, a little fiddling we're going to have to do. But, but this is a missed game, right? So let's write it down. So here's our leaf. And we've got this ball right there. We've got this ball at the bottom. We've got the edge ball kind of in between. So this is kind of the most outward position one. So this would be number one. The next most inner one, I think, is this one. This is number three. And then we've got on this side here, gotten a ball that's number four okay so that's basically what we've got in our circle okay so let's do the other three as well so we're gonna come around here and this one is a birdie so let's find the tusk there's the tusk and let's zoom in and let's match the birdie up to his little window And then focus. Oh, no. Yeah, like that. So for the birdie, we've got the most outward one right there. I think that's the most outward one. Yeah. And then we've got number two in between there. And then here's the bottom. Number three there, and the most inner one, number four there. Okay, so basically that's what it looks like. All right, let's go to the next one. Right here. Okay, this is like a little looking glass looking thing. I don't know what you would even, what you would call this, like little oval. I don't know. What's this what's this guy's name? What do you guys think this this guy's name is? I've no idea. I've never I've never figured out what what its name is. If it even has one. Okay, I think that one's something like this. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. So the other thingy other right like that. I think it's a superhero sigil, right? <laughs> it's a cartouche. What's a car? Is this is a car? I don't know what that is. I've never heard that word before. So this is the other one. So there's a ball here. There's a ball here. There's a ball at the bottom, and then there's a ball in between here. So the most outside one is this one. The most, the next one is this one, and then. This one, this one. Okay. Am I even saying that right? Cartouche? Okay. So that's the combos that we are going to need um, to get into those three tusks. All right. So what we are going to do now is actually ride back down. Right? Oh, no, that sends it down. I did that wrong. We're supposed to open the door and ride it down. Uh, okay, let's do this. Scrub, hello. Oh my gosh, and hello, Death. Welcome in, you guys. Welcome in. Um, so what we're actually going to do right here, so this is all like the kind of intro pieces to this. So I'm actually going to pause here, uh, start a new recording for YouTube. So if you're watching the VODs on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Um, and of course, uh, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.